Hey everyone, it's Caitlin and welcome to another video. In this video, I'm going to show you three make-ahead breakfasts that are perfect for anyone who likes food. I know a lot of us have different work slash school situations right now. So even if you're not going somewhere, sometimes it's just nice to have your breakfast made ahead of time so you can wake up, get your essential morning routine done, and then just grab your food, eat quickly, and get on with your day. So that's what I had in mind when I created these recipes. They're all easy, delicious, filling, wholesome, vegan. But even if you're not vegan, you can still try them and I'm pretty sure you'll enjoy them. Before we get into these recipes though, I want to say that this video is proudly sponsored by a Thrive Market. I personally love Thrive Market and use it all the time for myself. And I've also been working with them forever. So if you haven't yet checked out Thrive Market, this is your sign that you should. Thrive is great because they deliver all of my favorite pantry essentials straight to my door. Don't have to leave my house, can shop in my pajamas. They have all the vegan, gluten-free, fair trade and organic products that I personally need at prices that are also a little bit lower than where I would get them at my grocery stores in person. I also appreciate that their packaging facility is zero waste and they use a lot of paper to package their products, which I chop up and use in my compost. So it's a win, 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 win for me. So Thrive now has two different membership options Options for you. If you live in the US and you want to check it out, you can join for only a month for only $9.95 or you can join for a year at only $5 a month. And when you sign up and use my link in the description box, you get to pick out a free gift up to a $22 value. Honestly, the membership price is so worth it. I save hundreds of dollars by purchasing my staple products from Thrive every year. So if you want to check it out, the link is below. So for now though, we'll get into those recipes. Or is it? I don't know. Either way, let's go. First, we're going to be making some peaches and cream overnight oatmeal. This recipe is so surprisingly easy, but it tastes really, really good. First, we're going to be making a peach infused milk to give our oats even more peachy goodness. So here I just quartered a peach, put it in a blender with some non-dairy milk and a touch of maple syrup to sweeten it up, plus some vanilla extract. And then we're just going to blend this until the peaches completely dissolve. I have a high powered blender, so I only needed to quarter my peaches, but if you have a blender that's a little bit more finicky, you might wanna chop them a little bit more finely. So you're going to blend this for probably 45 to 60 seconds. You wanna make sure that the skin of the peaches is nice and chopped and the milk itself is going to turn a really beautiful peachy color. So I think that's kind of fun too. So now we're going to move on to making our oatmeal. We're going to add some oats to a bowl. I'm using rolled oats because I like the texture more, but you could also use quick oats. Then we're also going to add some chia seeds and a touch of cinnamon and then pour in our peachy milk. And in retrospect, you could have totally blended the cinnamon in with the milk, um, but it's okay. We're just gonna mix it all until it's well incorporated and everything is combined. Then we're also going to add in some yogurt. Again, you could have just blended this. Um, I'm not sure why I didn't. Nothing's gonna happen to the yogurt if you blend it. So I'm just stirring it in with the oats until it is dissolved as well. So oats and chia seeds obviously absorb a lot of liquid. That's why it looks a little bit runny right now. So before we fold in our peaches, we're actually going to let this mixture sit for about five minutes or so. Otherwise all the peaches would just sink to the bottom of the oats. And then when we distribute them into jars, they wouldn't be as evenly distributed. So as you can see, the mixture is a lot more thick and beautifully creamy right now. So we're just folding in our peaches. This is just one more additional peach. And this time I diced it up. I kept the skin on because it personally doesn't bother me. Um, but if it does, you could chop it off. I don't think it's that fuzzy once you wash it. So then that's literally it for this recipe, guys. You're just going to add it to your jars or whatever Tupperware that you would like to take this in. It's great for individual portions and also makes this really, really portable. I top mine with a peach wedge, which isn't practical for eating, but I thought it looks pretty. Um, and I just wanted to show you the final texture and consistency of the oats. This is so delicious. Peaches are in season in the summer, but you could also use frozen peaches and use this uh, recipe when it's a little bit cooler out. You just need to let them thaw first. Next, we're going the savory route, and we're going to be making some savory zucchini muffins. When I originally made this recipe, I was planning on making vegan quiches, but the zucchini actually makes this super light and fluffy, so I'm calling them muffins instead. So here I'm just using my mandolin to slice some rings of zucchini. This is totally optional. I just wanted to top each muffin with a thin slice of zucchini, um, but you can skip that if you don't want to. What you do need to do is grate your zucchini. So I'm using a medium sized grater here and my grater just holds zucchini in the bottom, but a box grater will work as well. We're going to shred two medium zucchini and zucchini, how many times can I say zucchini in a voiceover, geez. 
but this vegetable is very moist. So unless you want super mushy muffins, which I don't think anyone wants, we have to squeeze the extra liquid out. You can do this in a clean kitchen towel. I'm using my nut milk bag because it has a fine mesh strainer and I find that it works a little bit more effectively than a towel, but if you squeeze a towel, long enough you'll be good too so basically you just want to get a good hand workout for the day squeeze all the juice out you can discard it or add it to a smoothie or pasta or whatever and now we're going to mix the dry ingredients together for our recipe so we're starting with some chickpea flour some nutritional yeast and then we're going to add a bunch of different spices all that will be listed on my blog post but it's turmeric garlic italian seasoning salt and baking powder not soda and then we're going to whisk that all together form a well in the center of the bowl and then we're going to add in some plant-based milk you can really use any you'd like I think I'm using soy milk here but it doesn't really matter then we're just going to again mix everything together until all of the little lumps clumps whatever you call them in the batter are more evenly distributed and then once we got a nice thick viscous mixture going on here then we're going to add in our zucchinis. And we're also going to add some sun-dried tomatoes that I roughly chopped. This adds a nice flavor to the muffins as well, and I find it really goes well with the Italian seasoning. So once you fold them into the batter, you're pretty much good to go. So I greased a 12 muffin tin, and then I'm just using a really large cookie scoop to fill each of the muffin holes. You can use a spoon, whatever you want. I just find that's the neatest and easiest way. And then again, because I sliced my zucchini, I put that on top and then I popped those in the oven. And this is what they look like once they come out. They should be nice and golden and beautiful. And then you're just going to transfer them to a cooling rack, let them cool, and then they are ready to serve and enjoy. I really like these muffins because I find it's a nice, uh, refreshing take. Like it's still a nice portable baked good for breakfast but it's savory because sometimes you know you're just not in the mood for something sweet in the morning and these have a really nice fluffy texture here and they almost kind of melt in your mouth because of the zucchini it's not overly stringy because we're baking it um, but it just is a great way to start your day with some veggies last but certainly not least we're going to be making some peanut butter and jelly baked oatmeal bars but before we make our bars, we're going to make some easy chia seed jam. I showed you how to make this a while ago, but I thought I would give you a quick refresh because this is an easy staple to have in your pantry. We're going to start with some berries. You can use fresh berries, I'm using frozen. And then we're also going to add some lemon juice and some maple syrup. If you're using fresh berries, you wanna add a little water to the pan, but because I'm using frozen, um, they're gonna start thawing a little bit quicker and I didn't really need to add any water. We're just going to simmer these down and as you can see, the frozen berries are starting to melt. And then once the berries are completely thawed, this is when I go in and mash some of them. I'm using a potato masher, but as you can see, I'm being very kind and gentle here because I don't wanna scratch my pan and you shouldn't use metal in nonstick pans because it could scratch it and remove the coating. But anyways, once the berries are mashed to your liking, you're going to simmer it down until the mixture is thickened to your liking. And then just at the last minute, we're going to add some chia seeds, turn the heat off and stir them in. This is what's really going to help the jam thicken. And as it cools, you'll see that it will begin to thicken even more. So in our end result, we still want a kind of chunky, jammy spread that's spreadable, but I really love the texture of this jam because it spreads really easily. It's great on oatmeal. Honestly, it's like good on so many things, but today we're making PBJ bars. So let's get on with that. We're going to start first by making a sort of peanut infused milk. So we're going to take some peanut butter, add it to our bowl, and then we're going to sweeten it up with some maple syrup and a little bit of vanilla extract. And first we're going to mix this together um, before we add any water. I feel like we could just use water in this recipe because the peanut butter is already creamy, has a ton of flavor and you don't need to go buy plant-based milk or make it just for this recipe. So as you can see, the peanut butter doesn't really emulsify well with the water at first. So you have to really stir it well. I eventually switched to a whisk and you wanna start with a little bit of water and slowly gradually add to it. You'll know that it's starting to emulsify when it becomes a little bit lighter in color. And if you have a blender, you could also just totally do this in a blender. I just did it in a bowl. So then we're going to add our rolled oats and chia seeds along with some baking powder and a touch of salt and just mix everything together until the chia seeds are evenly incorporated. So this is going to be our peanut butter oat base for the recipe. And we're going to transfer it into a small lined baking sheet. You can use a bread loaf pan. Um, this recipe serves about two to three. So if you wanna make enough to last the week, you could easily double it and just put it in an eight by eight baking pan as well. So here I'm spreading it out with a spatula and then we're going to dollop on our chia seed jam, to sort of add a nice jammy layer on top. And then here I'm just adding a spoon to sort of mix it in a little bit so we get a kind of swirly pattern going on. 
Now we're going to pop that in the oven, let it bake until it's nice and solid. This is what it looks like when it comes out. It's a little less pretty, but you know, it's more portable and delicious. So now we're going to transfer it into a cooling rack and you can enjoy this warm if you want, but for portable purposes and for slicing purposes, it works a lot better if you let it cool completely first. So I am slicing mine into six even pieces. Um, personally, I would probably eat like two, two and a half of these for breakfast, but it totally depends on how hungry you are and what you wanna eat it with. But this is what the bars look like. So they're sort of like a baked oatmeal. They're a little bit more dense, kind of like a cross, I guess, between oatmeal and a granola bar. So they're nice and easily portable. And if they are portable, you would not do what I'm about to do now. But I wanted to make it look pretty. And if you're enjoying this at home, cause you know, most of us are working from home or staying at home anyways, I melted some peanut butter, just warmed it up a little bit to make it a little more runny. And I drizzled it on top. These are also really, really good if you put extra chia seed jam on top. It's basically like eating dessert for breakfast. All right, guys, that's it for this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know which recipe was your favorite and which one you want to make first. And also don't forget to check out Thrive Market. As you can see throughout this video, they have so many pantry staple items that I use and at a really great price as well. So that's all from me for today. If you have any other video suggestions, you could definitely leave a comment below. I'd be happy to work on those for you. At the end of the day, my ultimate goal is to get you to try more plant-based food and for you to enjoy it. So I hope you guys are having an awesome day and continue to have one and I look forward to seeing you soon. Talk to you later, bye.